thealternative.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We talk comics, movies, TV, music, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, TalkingAlternative.com. Uh, you can also stream us on our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. I'm your host, Michael Dolce. Uh, find me on my Twitter feed, Michael underscore Dolce. And um, we got a, we got a show for you today. I can't say it's great. I can't say it's not. I can definitely promise no insane beatings. Uh, we're going to welcome back Russ Wooten. Uh, he was our guest last week as well. Um, and it was just, uh, and we want to welcome Espada Primera Stark, who just joined us, as, as he always does every week, which is awesome, and uh, at Jersey Jedi as well, who jumped on. We're talking Walking Dead tonight. Uh, Russ Wooten is a member of the creative team behind the Walking Dead comic book. He does all the lettering. So he, uh, he's tremendous. He's a tremendous resource, and who better than, than him? Well, I guess maybe Robert Kirkman, but you know, we'll, we'll give him credit, because uh, I don't really know Robert Kirkman very well. I met him once. Very nice guy. Um, said hi. It was very good. But all right. But first, Secrets of the Sire is brought to you by all of our beloved patrons. We have a uh, Patreon page. If you guys haven't checked us out yet, it's an awesome page. Patreon.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Uh, you can actually go to MichaelDolce.com and it'll take you right to the Patreon page. Uh, but it's brought to you by our dedicated fans, Einar Peterson and Ashley. Hi, Kai. Our program director, Stephanie Dolce. Our executive producer, Steve Hovecki, joined by another Executive producer Brian Phillips, and as always, our Uber fan Christina Dolce. Uh, welcome to at DWTM underscore Bland, who just joined, and someone else who just joined, and I, you know, missed you, but I'm sure uh, you will stick around and, and check it out. Yeah, we're talking Walking Dead today. Um, if you would like your names shouted out on the interwebs, uh, become patrons. Uh, go to the Patreon page. Uh, you'll also get copies of the show outline, so you can kind of follow along and kind of know what's happening before anybody else does. So a lot of cool things. And uh, don't forget, this is a live call-in show. Eight seven seven four eight zero four one two zero. Feel free. Uh, feel free to call in because uh, it, we're talking Walking Dead. And um, so I outline these segments uh, in advance. Um, you know, and usually for the like the majority of the. Shows, we'll do a couple different things. We'll talk about a couple things, different things. But in this case, we're devoting it all to this Walking Dead because even the spinning the rack segment that we do at the end, it's going to be Walking Dead related because five months are up. We're finally here and uh, we finally get this culmination of everything we're waiting for. We finally get to a point where we find out who Negan's victim is, is going to be. So, again, now I don't encourage anyone to, um, you know, leave uh, the show uh, just put us on mute if you haven't seen it just put us on mute this way we get the ratings and, and you guys can still you know kind of hang out and stuff like that uh, but we're going to talk some spoilers here so again if you haven't I'm giving you like five seconds like literally five four three two one that being said by now it's Wednesday if you haven't actually uh, you know seen it then uh, then I think um, you know well I can't help you you know all right so What's my reaction to the, of, of the show? I, my, my initial reaction, literally, I'm done. That was my initial reaction. Like, after watching the episode earlier this week, in my case, it was Monday morning, which, not the best way to start off your work week, I gotta be honest with you. It's like 9.30 in the morning, and I'm watching this show, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is not, like, this is, of all the things I'm doing, I don't need, I don't need this, right? Of all, of all the things. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I watch it with my dad, and, and uh, we don't watch it Sunday nights because I'd have to be, you know, it logistically just doesn't work. Monday morning works out good. Now, I had a little bit of an advantage. I didn't see the finale until very recently. I knew what was coming in the finale uh, until recently, but at the same time, I didn't actually uh, see it. So, it, it, up until maybe a few weeks ago, and that was good. That was good. You know, for most fans, it was like five months of waiting, right? 
get to it, and obviously the big news was that Abraham is the first one to die, and then obviously Glenn is the next one to go. Um, he wasn't supposed to die. Daryl retaliates, so, you know, it's kind of like, all right, Daryl retaliates, basically kills Glenn. Glenn was the one that dies in the comics, so in a way it's self-fulfilling, um, but it's different at the same time because obviously Abraham wasn't, you know, uh, didn't die in that, in that scene in the comics, so a little bit differently in both, in both um, you know, the comic and the movie, so, you know, great. But I walked away thinking that's it, you know, and not because the violence was over the top, it was. Not because I didn't see the deaths coming, I did, and then I didn't, you know, it was kind of neat, actually. Oh, Abraham dies, great, Glenn saved. Oh, nope, Glenn gets it too, you know. Mainly because it's just, it's just not fun right now. This, this whole thing just stopped being fun. You know, I had this whole, like, top ten deaths thing that we were going to do today. It was going to be one of the segments. We were going to, you know, Gene Gray, Gwen Stacy, like, the whole thing. Like, we were going to do this whole thing. Uh, this, I had this whole segment planned. I really did. And, and it was great. Han Solo, you know, no. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. Like, it just, it just, like, there's a difference when I'm watching this versus watching Game of Thrones. Uh, there's some sadistic stuff that goes on in Game of Thrones. Don't get me wrong. There is. But at the end of the day, Walking Dead... Okay, I know zombies are not real, but they, the world is about how effed up humanity is. This could really happen. This could be happening, forget zombies, this could be happening in like South Central LA. This could be happening in like Nigeria. This could be happening anywhere. Uh, and to see this, I don't know, just, just not really, it's just not fun anymore. It's just not fun. All right? I've walked away from episodes, and I've walked away from episodes of Walking Dead in the past, being like, hey, you know what? This is exhilarating. This is thrilling. Oh my God, that guy died. I mean, there's a, but there's a huge difference between, let's say, Noah getting killed uh, a few seasons ago, getting torn to shreds by zombies. That was graphic. That was violent. But at the same time, it's in this world of zombies. So you're kind of like, you're, look, it's kind of exciting because it's like, well, what if zombies existed? Oh my God, there's the fear. I mean, this is going back to like when you played tag when you were 12 years old. You know, you don't want to be caught. You don't want to be tagged it. You don't want to be captured. Manhunt, you know, the whole thing. You know, there's elements to that. This was just like, and, and look, it was extremely faithful to the comics. So awesome. You know, in that regard, they did a great job. Extremely faithful to the comic. Big difference between a black and white comic, though, and seeing it. And, and, and again, I'm not upset with them for doing it. I'm not sitting there. And there's some people, and we'll get into this a little bit later. Some critics were very harsh. They're like, well, we're never watching another episode again. It has nothing to do with it. I just walked away just feeling, I just didn't feel good. Like, at the end of the day, I get it. That's the reaction I'm supposed to have. And yes, I guess I'll keep watching. But I got to be honest, I'm a little gun shy going back. I'm a little gun shy going back now. Because after, after seeing this, it just was, an, it, it just was I don't know. All right, so anyway, like we said, first Abraham gets his noggin brutally beaten in, which was a total shock, which was uh, definitely a shock for me. I thought it was going to either be Glenn or Maggie. Um, and we're going to talk about Maggie because um, there was actually some leaked footage of an alternate uh, ending that showed her getting killed. So we'll talk about that later in the show. Um, and we did a poll. We did a poll last week. 44% of you thought Glenn was the one that died. 12% uh, thought other. Turns out you were both right. But a lot of critics were arguing that didn't like being strung along. Now, this is the other argument that people had. And again, I don't have this argument because I, I don't think it, it, it didn't actually happen for me. Because I, you know, I had heard, yes, after watching the 90-minute season finale, that thing dragged on for a while. There is no question about it. It dragged on for 90 minutes, and then you don't find out who dies at the end. And then a lot of people had problems with that. And then this, this episode actually dragged on a little bit, too, at the beginning. Ed Villa Real just asked, let me ask you then, what would have been a satisfying episode then? I thought it was great. Again, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm actually separating the, the actual episode. Because let me, let me tell you right now, I think Scott Gimple did an exceptional job building the suspense in this episode. Much better than in the finale. Um, on my way home last week before you know, we actually see this episode, I actually tried picturing what it would, like to, what it would be like to have to write this episode. In my head, it kind of opened with a scene from the past. Let's, let's assume Glenn and Maggie get it, right? You know, let's, let's say they're the two that actually get it, okay? I pictured a scene opening up with Glenn and Maggie, maybe somewhere in the past, maybe catching an unseen moment of tenderness, of love, and then boom! Glenn dead on the floor. Boom! Maggie dead on the floor. You know, really hitting you hard. That's what I actually pictured the opening scene to have been like, right? Now, doesn't mean that 
what they did wasn't good or bad or better. Um, but that's how I kind of envisioned it. Like, how would I, if I'm the writer, how am I going to approach this? Because it's, it's big and it's, and it's tough. Not easy to do. So I thought the way he did it, though, where basically he drags Rick um, into, the, into the van and you get to see the flashback through Rick's eyes. Again, brilliant. So, I, again, not necessarily talking about satisfying episode versus, you know, well-written episode. I just came away just, it was just too much. Like, everything was just too much at the end of the day. Like, the show is now not fun. Like, it's almost to a point where this is, uh, this is just escalating to a point. And it's seven seasons in. It's the top-rated show on TV. So it's got to keep escalating. And I get it. So, again, I'm not... I'm not really even criticizing the violence. I'm not criticizing the uh, execution of the episode. I thought the execution was phenomenal. I just walked away going, like, I don't need to see this anymore. You know what I mean? It's almost like, you know what? I, it, it's like where that kid in the, in the schoolyard, he just, he just takes it too far after a while. It just, it just loses it. I, it, just, it just, I don't know. I was just mentally done. It, it was just way too much. But again... Keep chiming in. Ed, I would love to hear your thoughts on, on that reaction as well, too, because, again, I did. I thought it was great. Um, Ryan Henry, I was hoping that the first episode would have focused on Carol Morgan and the Kingdom. Oof, boy, could you uh, Just to hear the reactions from all those fans who waited to find out who Negan killed. Let me tell you right now, South Park did that a few years ago in the first season. Okay, more than a few years ago. 20 years ago, they did this. They had their cliffhanger episode of who killed... Um, uh, who killed uh, Cartman's mom? Not who killed... Was it? No, it was who is Cartman's dad, right? Not who killed Cartman's dad. See, this is what Walking Dead did. It just makes you think death. Who uh, was Cartman's dad? And they did a cliffhanger in the very next episode. They did a Terrence and Philip one-shot episode. And Comedy Central was almost like shut down. Like, they got so many... They got death threats. Uh, I mean, it was, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing, like, how many death threats they got. It was amazing, like... And so, you know, Trey and Stone, who, uh, you know, in terms of creative... They're, like, my creative idols. Trey more than um, Matt, because I don't really know how much Matt really does. I know Trey does, like, pretty much everything there. But they're like, yeah, we, we kind of effed up. We shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, so, Ryan, to, to your point, there is no way... Uh, if you think Walking Dead was going to get killed for the way they, they even just w gave you 15 minutes to wait to see who died... Oof, man, could you imagine? No. Uh, again, just mentally done by the end. Uh, Ed says, me too, we're going out for a few beers to discuss. I mean, well, let me, I mean, let me ask you a question, though. I mean, again, at this point, are you now intrigued to see? Because I guess, and, and reading the interviews and hearing the interviews with people, um, you know, Scott Gimple talked about we needed to break Rick, and we needed to break the audience. We needed the audience to feel that Rick would fall under Negan's thumb. And you see it at the beginning, you know, he kills Abraham and Rick's initial reaction is, I'm going to kill you. Not today, not tomorrow, but someday. And Negan's like, whoa, okay, going to have to break you further. Because apparently killing someone right in front of you wasn't enough. I have to break you. And they had to break the audience. But they did. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They accomplished everything they set up for. It was a brilliant episode. They did, but I'm broken. I'm not rooting for them to kill Negan. Now, like it was with the governor, like it was in previous episodes. I'm just like, ah, I'm just going to turn this off now. Like, I'm just going to turn it off now. I'll watch it next week. I don't know. All right, well, apparently critics and fans um, kind of had similar reactions to me. Not necessarily the same, but they definitely went off on Walking Dead. So when we come back, uh, we're going to talk the critical and fan reaction to The Walking Dead. Too much violence or too faithful to the comic when we come back? You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And, and welcome, welcome to, to 21st Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. 
for you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business and your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire. We do this every week. We talk comics, movies, TV, and music. Well, sometimes music. We don't, we don't really do much music anymore. It's too bad, though. Actually, I, I've had some good uh, interviews recently. I just interviewed Joshua Radden. I don't know if you know him. Singer, songwriter. Very good. Letters to Cleo, 90s, 90s pop rock band. Um, if you're a patron, I'll be putting these interviews uh, full and uncut on the Patreon page. Go to michaeldolce.com. Um, how good is Walking Dead or how popular is Walking Dead? We're devoting our entire show to Walking Dead. Um, there's a whole thing on social media um, about trolling and feminism, and, and it definitely gets me going, which is very exciting and interesting. But we're talking Walking Dead. Nothing but Walking Dead today. We'll get onto the issues. We'll talk Doctor Strange. Sam, our trusty engineer, was like, when are you going to talk Doctor Strange? It's coming out. Well, we'll talk next week uh, because this is, this is all Walking Dead. Absolutely just all Walking Dead. There's no, there's no other way around it. Uh, I mean, And look, at the end of the day, I'm going to keep watching the show. I mean, I just am, you know. I, but I'm not going to be as excited for it right now. It's got to really ramp itself back up again. It's got to really, it's, it has to. It just has to ramp up the storyline for me. I am, you know, again, the producers did exactly what they set out to accomplish. They wanted to break the audience and make the audience believe that Rick will fall under Negan's control. And he will. Because at this point, usually when the governor did something or someone did something in the previous, you'd be like, oh, I can't wait till Rick gets him. And here I'm just like, just, Rick, just pack up and walk away. Like at this point, you got two of your best friends, their heads brutally beaten in to the point of no return. Just, just walk away at this point. Even I'm like sitting there going, you know, you don't need to be here anymore. Just go to the next settlement. It's just, this, is, this was too much. And learn your lesson from here and go on. But again... I guess that's the point of it. Well, all right. Apparently, critics and fans out there, the gory scenes were enough to prompt criticism from just a lot of different people, right? Parents Television Council, conservative group, calls itself a nonpartisan education organization advocating responsible entertainment. Last night's season premiere of The Walking Dead was one of the most graphically violent shows we've ever seen on television, comparable to the most violent of programs found on premium cable networks. For anybody that just joined us and has not seen Walking Dead, Again, keep the show on. I don't want you to not listen to the show. It's on TalkingAlternative.com. It's on Facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. It's on Secrets of the Sire.com. It's a Patreon page. It's a lot of shameless plugging going on there. Um, but turn away, because we're going to actually talk about the show again. All right, in the comic, Glenn gets his head beaten in so badly that his eyeball pops out. And they basically, faithfully... Um, <laughs> portray that exact scene in the in the comic now again his eye is kind of there it's dangling it's great makeup job i mean again you know again for ed villa real who 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 chimed in again the episode was superb I, I, there's nothing about it that, that i'm not sitting there going like oh they should have done this or they should have done that i gotta be honest i had my own take on how they how i would have written it which i talked about in the first segment but totally the way they did it i thought was i thought it was brilliant i thought it was great nothing wrong with the way they wrote it the impact was there it just it's just holy cow i'm i'm just I'm just done. Like, it's just, it's just, it's too much. Um, but again, very violent episode. Uh, you really do see Abraham getting beaten down. Welcome at Dive Dolphins. Um, welcome at Giovanni Scaringi um, to, the, uh, to the broadcast as well, too. Yeah, I mean, you see it, though. I mean, you see every bash. You feel every bash. There's blood everywhere. There was a, there was a viewer last um, at New York Comic Con who basically is like, based on the direction of blood that splattered off of, off of Rick's face, it's got to be Maggie that ends up getting killed. I mean, it's... it's and again, for a show that is violent by nature, zombies are, are ripping people to shreds and eating guts and gore, there's a, there's a, a horror movie-esque campiness to zombies that... Yes, it can be brutal, and yes, it can be violent, but to see human beings doing this to other human beings, 
that's where that's where I could see people, you know, crossing the line. Uh, critics were also divided with, on the episode. Many upset. Now, some were upset that they made fans wait five months to find out who was killed, and then had to wait another fifteen minutes to find out who was killed. Uh, on top of 90 minutes in the season finale of waiting to find out who was killed, um, Forbes had a really, really great article, and uh, they wrote, Cliffhangers are not inherently bad, but there are ways to do them right and ways to do them wrong. Not one based on deceiving the audience. Uh, here, twice in a single season, Walking Dead created artificial, unnecessary mysteries based on camera tricks and not plot development. Hello from Russia as well. We got a lot of, we got a lot of love. We got Amsterdam listening to us. Uh, we got... Norway. Norway loves us. That's great. I'm huge in Germany, too. It's great. Um, but hello from Russia as well. We're talking Walking Dead um, yes. on TalkingAlternative.com. Uh, so Forbes was talking about the mystery of Glenn dying last season, um, the quote-unquote Glenn dying last season. They did set this whole scenario up where Glenn basically, um, basically, uh, what do you call, he... It looks like he dies, essentially. It's him and this other guy, and the other guy kills himself because they're surrounded by zombies. They're on top of a dumpster. Um, he kills himself and knocks Glenn over and himself. And then you have this camera trick scene where you see gl what you think is Glenn's insides getting pulled to shreds and torn to shreds. And then you'd think, wow, that's actually pretty gutsy of them to kill Glenn there and not where he dies in the comic, which is, it, which is at the other end of Negan's bat. Okay, we'll give him that. But... As it turns out, it's a camera trick ploy. It's the guy who shot himself. It's his guts getting um, ripped out. Glenn, you know, tucks himself away under the dumpster, eventually gets rescued, and, and, and lives to see another day. Um, in my, in my when, I, when, when, we, when we learned that he was still alive, I kind of thought, okay, they're, they're getting people prepared to watch Glenn die for real. That was my thinking about it. But Forbes was basically saying, you know, they created... An, you know, unnecessary mystery. And they did it again. Same thing, right? Where you know somebody gets killed, you just don't know who it is. And again, not everyone, uh, actually, I can guarantee not everyone who reads the comic watches the show. Um, you know, or, or vice versa, actually, whoever watches the show reads the comic. I mean, I can guarantee that. I mean, you had 17 million, 17 million viewers, right? I mean, there's no way. Complex uh, found similar fault, uh, the website Complex. Um, they even offered a better solution than simply dragging out a death for two plus episodes. As long as that season six finale was, it managed to build a real sense of dread by the end, but TWD squandered that momentum by letting it remain dormant for six months. If one or both of the latest deaths came back in April, it would have been devastating. But now, and after the diversion that was Rick and Negan's demented road trip, it was more like, yeah, that sucks. So what do you guys think? I mean, do you think that we should have seen Abraham get killed? Considering they were going to kill two people anyway, having Abraham die at the end of the season finale and having them kind of, and having Rick get dragged away, maybe that would have been the better cliffhanger. We'll discuss next with our guest, Russ Wooten, who works on The Walking Dead comic. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day.
Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire. We are talking Walking Dead, just just all Walking Dead today. Uh, Daryl DV chimed in. Negan took out Rick's two main guys, Abraham the Brawn and Glenn the Brains. I think it was intentional. You know what? Uh, good point. Good observation, to be honest with you. In the midst of the death itself and the uh, anguish and the sorrow and everything... It does lead you to believe maybe, uh, maybe it would have. But then again, and, then, and he takes Daryl prisoner. Don't forget too. Daryl's another one of Rick's main guys too. Um, I think the entire episode though was definitely all about breaking uh, Rick and then breaking us in in turn. So um, all right, we're gonna welcome our next guest, and we got a ton of questions for him. Uh, his name is Russ Wooten. He actually works on the Walking Dead comic. So uh, Russ, how's it going? Good, good. How's it going, man? Welcome back. You're you're our first uh, repeat guest uh, back to back oh, that's here. Cool. So, um, all right, I'm we, we, I mean, we got so much ground to cover here. Um, first of all, what did you think of the episode and, uh, what did you think of the, uh, shocking two deaths, not one? Uh, I thought overall the episode was great. I mean, I was, um, it was kind of a shock. I mean, I thought that we didn't, you and I didn't talk last week about specifically like who would die. I think we, I think I kind of ruled out, um, uh, if you remember, I ruled out Daryl. I didn't think Daryl was going to go. Right. Um, but I don't know if I had any predictions. But I know that I did think that maybe Abraham was going to go, but I wasn't uh, sure. So when when I saw it was going to be him, I wasn't too shocked. But um, I was kind of shocked when uh, Glenn got it just because I wasn't expecting the second death. And... I don't know about you, but I kind of saw I kind of saw coming right before Negan turned around because when Negan was ranting, you yes. know, and you could see Glenn in the background, that's what he was shaking his head too. He was like, "Yes, yes," like he was. It was it was one of those moments. I agree with you. I was like, "Up, oh, no, he's going to get it. He's totally going to get it right now." Because he was kind of like Negan's, like, "Now you're going to listen to me," and Glenn's just shaking his head. Yes, we're going to. Yes, we're going to. And boom, no, done. Yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, I think that was. I mean, I'm sure they did. They they sort of I think they shot that in a way so that you could see Glenn and then people who read, knew the comic kind of knew what was coming. Even if you didn't know the comic, I think you had to kind of worry because if you paid attention to what Negan had been saying, mm-hmm. you know the first time he said you got you that one's free, but yeah. the next time somebody you know acts out, yep. so to speak, you know, you're gonna. Somebody's going to have to pay for it. And, and that's, um, that's something that, they, that uh, again, I kind of applaud the, the writers for also in the sense of now Daryl's got to live with that. I mean, he essentially got Glenn killed. I mean, um, you know, we had one of, our, one of our listeners was saying that he thinks it was intentional that he killed both. But I actually think that, you know, it really was, he was, Negan was living up to his word. You know, if you, if you cross me, uh, you have to pay the price. And I think he did. Yeah, you know, Negan is, an, is a nasty guy. I mean, he is a psychopath, uh, um, and but obviously, this is if you think about it, though, um, you know, from he, he went. I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but he went he went easy on Rick's group compared to how many people of Negan's that Rick killed yep. or Rick's people killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the middle of the night, slitting their throats, right? Right. And, and ambushing them um, in a preemptive strike. I think that, I mean, obviously, he, Nick is doing it because he wants workers. He wants slaves, right? I mean, right. This isn't, um, it wasn't altruistic. But at the same time, uh, yeah, Rick's group is kind of lucky that they just didn't get mowed down. I mean, don't forget also, Daryl blew, you know, 12 of them up with a rocket launcher, too, at one point. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so he's, he's killed a lot. I mean, they've actually they've been uh, quite the thorn in Negan's side. What do you think about this uh, statement? This is coming from uh, the web- website Complex. Um, they were upset with the dragging out the death for two plus episodes, and they said as long as as long as that season six finale was, it managed to build a real sense of dread by the end. But The Walking Dead squandered that momentum by letting it remain dormant for six months. If one or both of the latest deaths came back in April, it would have been more devastating. But now, and after the diversion of Rick and Negan's demented road trip, it was more like, "Oh yeah, hey, that sucks." Did you do you agree with that statement or no? I don't know. You know, maybe I. I the thing is. The Walking Dead, it seems like, you know, that like a lot of television shows, 
um, tends to end on a cliffhanger. And so, um, you know, it's nothing new that a television show or even a comic book ends on a cliffhanger. Right. And then you've got to wait till the next season or whatever. But uh, maybe, I, I, I mean, I know the, the end of last season, I was kind of like, uh, uh, you know, but at the same time, I don't know that, yeah, may, maybe Glenn's death, if they had saved Glenn's death till this season premiere, it may have been, you know, maybe there would have been some impact there. But you don't, the problem is, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because, I mean, I, maybe. But, you know, it's kind it, of it's, like. It's a tough one, right? Writer, you know, writer's room, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like, it's, it's a tough uh, one. I know, think, I, I think if people they could were. anything apart. And, but I. The thing is, for me though, I think this episode works so well as a as a season opener, um, as as dark and dire as it was, mm-hmm. that I can't imagine splitting it up in that way. Because yeah, you would have had a, li- a cliffhanger with Rick getting dragged into the RV. Yep, and then you know, then okay, you're you know, so you're left wondering what's going to happen next, right? Right. But the, the cliffhanger, this. <laughs> The cliffhanger that they gave us was, I think, more, uh, um, you know, a more emotional kind of uh, thing because you know somebody died. It's just like who, 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 and then I think most people would would have guessed, oh, Rick's not going to die, but they're thinking, what's going to happen? Then, then what would you think? A lot of comic book people would think, oh. He's going to get his hand chopped off because he took the action. Sure. You know, well, I was thinking that the whole like that. time. But that's not really much of a cliffhanger. And so, yeah, I mean, I guess you could do it, but I just think that the, this, as much as like the last episode of last season felt like it dragged a little bit. Yeah. Because we all knew that the Negan, the introduction to Negan was coming. Right. Um, I felt like this, this episode was just very well done. That I don't, I don't, I don't see how... This episode would have been as good if they would have killed off Abraham last season at the end. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think I agree with Complex completely. I mean, I see where they're coming from, but I think they're more complaining about the fact that the last, like the the season six finale, it really did kind of. I mean, I could see it too. I was I was kind of on pins and needles watching it, and and I hadn't watched it until maybe a few weeks ago. I had heard obviously Negan was in it and the cliffhanger, and you don't know who dies, so I knew basically the gist of it. So the entire episode, I'm, the entire time I'm watching, I'm going, "Wow, this is ninety minutes!" Like that's kind of crazy that it's ninety minutes. But I actually thought I thought I thought overall it would be fascinating to see. If Abraham did get it in the season six finale, but I agree with you. I don't think you had to. I think there was definitely enough of a cliffhanger. I mean, you know, you have who shot Jr. I mean, you have you have previous, you know, you have uh, precedent for this kind of stuff. You know, it's not as if uh, it's not as if the uh, the Walking Dead is like doing something like groundbreaking in terms of that. You know, there's precedent for this. I don't think it's too bad. I think a lot of people were just calling out the gimmick nature of it. But I mean, look, it's, you know, it's TV. It's a business. That, but then again. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, there. I think there are other criticisms as far as gimmicks go. Um, in pre, you know, at other times in in the in the series in the television series. So I don't know. I mm-hmm. mean, I know you know. I had a friend of mine who was upset. He was he was like, I can't believe they didn't. But at the same time, he knew he felt like it was good storytelling that they left you hanging. Right. Right. Um. I I think that uh, you know I don't know gimmick I don't know what you know that's that's you know that's so subjective too the whole gimmick thing sure what, what is a gimmick is it is it a gimmick because you want to give your audience suspense I don't know I mean I read something re- yesterday I think where somebody's complaining that they felt like this episode was manipulative manipulating the emotions I'm like well <laughs> isn't that the whole idea does? isn't that what storytellers do right Manip- you know. I, yeah, I mean, if I'm reading a story and I keep getting red herrings that go nowhere, and and then you know, then I could feel cheated or something. But just because my emotions are are, you know, being pulled one way or another, I don't know that that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, how did you feel about this uh, emotionally as a you know as a as a fan or you know with the deaths? I'll, I'll say this, I. And we're going to get to this in a second too. I, the death, see, deaths in 
entertainment and, and TV shows, like I'll use Game of Thrones as, as an example, is a great yeah. device. I mean, it's a fun device because you, you, you're you always on the seat of your pants wondering, you know, what's going to happen. Here, there was more of a sense of dread, and, and, and I, I hearkened back to what Scott Gimple had said. He's like, we wanted to break Rick, and then we wanted to break the audience. We wanted to make sure the audience understood that Rick will now be following Negan, and we wanted the audience to understand that he's going to be following Negan. Well, mission was accomplished. I felt very broken by the end, and not, you know, not because... Uh, characters die i mean it happens it, it can be it can be a very powerful plot device but in this in this regard and this actually kind of segues nicely into uh some of the you know the other thing that we keep we keep hearing about it it was this essentially torture porn that's something the verge was you know they went a step further they wrote an article this wasn't quality television it, and it wasn't suspenseful drama it was torture porn masquerading and storytelling and amc I, should be ashamed for airing it you know i here's, yeah here's the thing if I, if if they had never watched The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. I could see that criticism and say, okay, I see where they're coming from. But if they were fans of The Walking Dead before now, then I, I kind of have to call bullshit because I think it's kind of hypocritical. If you were a fan of, of The Walking Dead television show, yeah. and then all of a sudden this episode is what pushed you over and said, oh, this is this is gruesome, too gruesome, or poor, torture porn. Well, I, 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 I think it's disingenuous because... We've had some pretty gruesome deaths in previous episodes. And now, if someone has complained about some of those gruesome deaths, and I've yes. heard some people complain, you know, like, oh, we didn't need to see that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if, you, if this is where you're drawing the line, I mean, I, I don't, I feel like, uh, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just, I, I don't know. I, I mean, come on, it's just, this it's a horror show. It's, I mean, you know, if you want to talk about, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask yeah. you this: Is there a difference between Noah getting ripped to shreds by zombies versus right. seeing a human being act this way toward another human being when Abraham gets his brains beaten out, or Glenn gets his brains beaten out, or seeing the eyeball coming out? Now, mind you, all this, with the exception of obviously Abraham didn't die this way in the comics is very faithful to the comics, but again, big difference in a black and white comic versus, uh, and, and there was actually a Facebook post that was like that, hey, it's a big difference yeah. between seeing a black and white comic and the guy's eyes bulging out versus seeing this in real life. Now, I do wager there is a difference. There's a, there's a, there is there's there is an emotional difference because, and I said this earlier in the show, this could be happening anywhere. You take take zombies out of it. I mean, there, there are people acting like this way toward other people and it's inhumane and cruel so in that sense it is worse than seeing Noah get ripped to shreds by zombies because A I don't know how come the zombies can always rip people to shreds first of all I, they're supposed to be like dead and decaying like how does their bite just instantly but that's that's a conversation for another day but again right. the uh, the zombies in general I mean that's the heightened reality that's the uh i don't want to say wish fulfillment that's not the right word that i'm looking for but you know the danger scenario that we all kind of pretend when we we're kids you know like oh we're getting chased by monsters or we're getting chased by something so watching noah get ripped to shreds by zombies adds a layer of reality to it but at the same time it's still someone getting ripped to shred by zombies and it's not as real this is more like these are just human beings hurting other human beings so there can be a, a specific line that's drawn with this well, yeah, and I, I think that I think what's happening is a lot of people are reacting viscerally to the fact that the monster in this case is a human, right? You know, the monster, which it always makes it, it always to me. It's, I mean, I love horror movies and mm-hmm. horror books um, and comics, but it always it always hits deeper and more um, in a more real way. When it's something that that could happen in the real world, it's yeah. something where people, it's something a person doing, so, you know, a serial killer or yep. something like that, mm-hmm. or you know, somebody who's, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, I, yeah, it's just, I think when you re- think, okay, like you just said, I mean, there are people out there today doing things just as bad, if not worse, than what Negan did to other human beings, and I think, I think it's like. Uh, I think that hits people, yeah, in, in a place that's different than just seeing a monster ripping someone apart because you can watch that and you can see the fantasy in it and you, right. can, dis- you can disconnect 
from the real uh, horrors of that kind of thing. And then you see Negan do it or someone else, and then in such a graphic way, you know, okay, yeah, it's a story, it's post-apocalyptic and, and, and zombies and stuff, but the thing is, and I think this is where the comic book works too, is for the... From very early on, when, when, when Rick says in the, in the comics and in the show, we are the walking dead, mm-hmm. it's like, it's pretty clear that the real monsters in this world are the humans, not the zombies. Right. The walkers, in fact, are, are just kind of like animals, any other animal in the wild. They're mm-hmm. just going on instinct, right? Mm-hmm. The real monsters are the humans. So, And the question I have is, when you people look and they, they watch this, um and they get upset about it, were they upset when, when Rick and, and his people uh, went and slaughtered people in their sleep? I agree. I wonder, because I was disturbed by that, but I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't, you know, want to boycott the show. I mean, because I think this is, brings up a lot of good things about questions about morality and mm-hmm. who's really the bad guy. Right. Really, who's worse, Rick or uh, Nika? Because... Honestly, they're, they're equal. I mean, and, and I actually had that reaction, too, last season, too, because I remember I, I, and my dad and I watch it religiously together. That's our thing that we do right now. And, and, uh, and I said to him, I said, you know, why, is, why are they just so blatantly killing people now? It, it seemed actually out of character. I know that, in a way, they built up to it in the sense that um, at this point, they've kind of done so much and been through so much that they'll kind of protect their what they have at all costs. But I agree with you. It was a preemptive strike versus, uh, you know, versus a reactive strike. Uh, we're talking with Russ Wooten, who actually works on the Walking Dead comic. He gets uh, he gets to see all the scripts and he gets to see all this stuff. Not the TV show stuff, but he gets to see the comic book stuff, which basically lays the foundation for the TV show. Uh, so, my uh, Russ, what I was saying at the beginning of this um, of this show is that. I didn't, and again, I didn't want to confuse any of our listeners. I thought the show itself, the episode itself was brilliant. I thought it was brilliantly executed. I thought it was emotional. I thought it was resonant. I thought it was violent. But at the same time, my feeling at the end of it was like, I'm done. Like, I actually don't, I'm not looking forward to next episode. Like, I'm not, like most times when something like this happens, like when Abraham got his, his head crushed in and Rick looks up to him and goes, I'm going to kill you. Not today, not tomorrow. That's that rallying feeling. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, we're going to get you. How dare you do this to my group? By the end of it, I was just like, guys, just run away. Just just seriously, pack up right. and just go to New York or go to L.A. Just go somewhere else. We don't, we don't need this anymore. Like, that was my feeling. Um, what do you think? Uh, what's, your, what's your feeling? Are you looking forward to the next episode? Are you looking forward to the revenge? Or are you, in fact, what Scott Gimple promised uh, he wanted the audience to be broken. Me personally, I. Uh, that's why I asked you earlier, like uh, how you felt emotionally. I was more emotional at the end of the episode when you know when all of Negan's people are gone and Rick's group has to sit there and and now they have to face the reality of what just happened and then 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 it's like kind of like you know now what Rick is broken. Yeah, I think I I think they have accomplished and if people want to can't watch the show anymore. I get it. I mean, I had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, who loved the Walking Dead comic, and when Glenn died in the comics, he said, I gotta take a break. I can't, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> and I'm not even sure he went back to the book. Yeah. Um, I didn't, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't that he, he hated it, it was just, it was emotionally a lot for him to deal with, right? So he, yeah. and he understood the storytelling aspect of it and why they did it, but he, he just had to take a break, and so if people can't deal with it, I get it. Uh, I do think, though, that people should give the next episode a shot. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think just in the previews, we're going to see um, it's going to it's going to be a different feel. It's, a di- it's, it's again, it's a different world, and 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 the thing is, you can't. That's what happened with the, the with the comics. Uh, I do think the comics when it led up to this. And when Rick made the strike against Negan, I think they had a little more time in the comics to build up to it. So, yeah. so Rick's strike felt a little more justified. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, you know, I think that this one, I think, but that's a part of the storytelling. This kind of story is you. There's going to be these huge ups and downs, and uh, if you, you know, you, you get too complacent, yeah, as a watcher or a reader, or 
even as a person in this world, I think that's what ha- has happened is these people, they got a little too complacent, even though last season was kind of tough. But, sure. You know, they kind of forgot um, what the, the real dangers out there, I guess, you know, uh, that kind of got, you know. I, I, think, I really think Rick's character in the show especially is like, you know, kind of got too big for his britches, right? Kind sure. Of, <laughs> um, and I think that's where the balance comes in with uh, Morgan, having Morgan in there, kind of questioning that, you know, um, questioning the kind of, um, what would you call it, the, the sort of, the sort of tough guy aspect of like Rick and Daryl. Sure, he's the he's uh, a, he's the yin and the yang there. I mean, he he obviously gives him a, gives him gives him a different feel. Um, and versus... you know, M- Morgan, you could say Morgan went too far the other way and let people get and people end up dying because of that. But that's you know, but that's that's like that's I like, guess that's I like guess life, you know we, right. we, you know there's, and nobody's perfect in this. And I think that's why people are going to uh, like Megan as much as they hate him because sure. He's, he's, there's a sort of a charisma there. And even, even though you could say, you know, you can pick your sides and who's the good and evil, um, I think the thing that's disturbing in all of this is that, you know, you wonder what would, what would we act like in, an, in this post-apocalyptic world? Because the rules are all changed. This is, sure. You know, what you're watching in The Walking Dead has nothing to do with the, the the world most of us live in. Right. I think the closest it would come to is maybe a war zone, you know. That would be it. Even then, I don't think it quite fits just because, you know, even though in a war zone, there's certain aspects of our society that... There's still civility in a war zone. I think that's right. what it comes down to. All right, but there's also civility on radio. Unfortunately, we have to cut out, but Russ, you have been an amazing guest back-to-back again. Russ Wooten, he does the letters on The Walking Dead comics, so he actually knows just as much, if not more, about The Walking Dead uh, than many folks out there. Russ, it has been a pleasure to have you on both weeks in a row. Keep watching. I will watch the next episode. I will. I just I just need a break, man. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel, hey. I don't blame you at all. I really don't. When we come back, we are going to talk more comments. We've got a lot of people uh, dishing in here on their feedback as well, too. And we're going to look at one Facebook post that I thought was pretty, pretty strong. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. TalkingAlternative.com Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire. We are talking comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every week, and specifically today we are all Walking Dead. Uh, I want to thank my guest, Russ Wooten. He does the letters for the Walking Dead comics, so uh, he's got a lot of great feedback. If you want to check out the uh, the last week's episode, the last podcast we had with him was uh, was great. We were talking all, everything leading into it and what it's like working on a comic and getting those scripts in advance, knowing Glenn was going to die a couple months before everybody else knew. Uh, good stuff all around there as well, too. So, um, Ed Villarreal tuned in, you're, and he asked, you're not looking forward to how they're going to get back at Negan. 
No, no, I'm not. And I'll tell you why. Usually there's a good and an evil, and usually our crew, um, you know, Rick's crew is is the um, is the good to everyone else's bad. The governor was bad. You know, the governor was power hungry. Um, but now as the seasons have kind of come on, you know, and Russ made this point, like, is Rick any better than the governor? Because quite frankly, I don't think that's I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, you know, Rick especially in the show, wasn't even justified. Basically like, hey, these are guys that are trying to kill us. Uh, can you protect us? Sure, let's go kill them. Like, that's all. There was, no, there was no moral question. There was no, like, questioning whether or not, you know, it's the right thing to do. Or it was just like, I mean, he's even got the priest, like, arming up. Like, the priest in the show was just like, yep, 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 yep. Got to shoot these guys. Got to kill these guys. I'm going to kill all these people. So, um, and again, when he killed Abraham, I was feeling that, Oh, I can't wait till Rick gets back at him for doing this. But by the end of the episode, I'm just like, you know what? Just give up at all. Just give up. I, I, I don't know. Like, I just want, I, it was just very emotional. And, and Ed also chimed in. All the people that are saying they are emotionally drained from the episode and are done, I want to know what they want from the show. Again, it's, it, it, the show was set out to accomplish the breaking of the audience. And that's direct from the uh, writer of the episode. We're, we're here to break the audience. They did. I, in my mind, they did. And again... These these are not complaints or or critiques. These are just like my own emotional feeling. Like at the end of the day, like I'm just like, oof, this is not the way I want to start. I, I honestly sat for three hours Monday morning. I didn't do any work. I didn't get anything done. I was going to write some articles. I was getting stuff together. I was looking at to see what other reaction people had about Walking Dead. Um, and in that case, look, extremely powerful episode. Completely like it. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. It did resonate emotionally. It did resonate in a way, but it wasn't. I mean, normally, too, if Daryl's actions were to get Glenn killed, I might be thinking about that aspect, the what-if aspect. But by the end, I'm, uh, even that didn't, you know, at that point, I'm just so emotionally drained at that point. That's the whole, I guess that's the point. I'm not asking for anything out of the show. I'm not asking for them to do this. I'm not criticizing anything. I think they executed exactly what they wanted, and they did it perfectly. I just need a break now. <laughs> I just need a break. Look, it's just too much. Um, would it have been better if Carol or Morgan came and saved everyone? No. Again, I don't think it would have been better. I think exactly what they are trying to do. And in fact, it might even come across as ingenuine. Now, let's go back to, if you recall, Carol already did this once. Carol did save the entire crew back when, the, um, when you went with Terminus. I mean, Rick and his crew were about to be literally cannibalized and, and used as livestock and killed by the, the group of cannibals that took over Terminus. And they are like one person away from getting their throat slit, and Carol luckily was there to save them. A again, in that regard, it's so fantastical to me. Um, that you do want a little movie magic. You do want a little TV magic. You want people to come in and save you. And there was a part of me that, well, I guess there's also a part of me that knew someone was going to die. And we all, well, obviously, we all knew someone was going to die. But there's a part of me that was like, no, nope, you know, at this point, um, you know, it's going to happen. And, and it has to happen. So there was no, there was no turning back. So maybe... Maybe if I didn't know that someone died in the comic, or maybe if we didn't know someone died at the end of the episode, uh, there would be part of me that goes, oh, I hope someone's, I hope they save him. I hope somebody saves him. But in this particular case, like, it's, it, like, it was just, it was a fate accompli, or whatever they, whatever they say. So it, it was going to happen. Like, it was going to happen. So, and we sat through it, and we had to live it, and, and it was terrible. And it was just terrible. And, and again, not creatively terrible, not... Um, execution wise terrible just it was just tough to watch like it just it was just tough to watch you know would have been tough to watch it would have been tough to see Maggie die uh, according to Variety uh, there is some leaked footage uh, out there that basically um, you know shows Maggie was an, as an alternate ending so instead it's actually Maggie getting her head beat in instead of Abraham and Glenn has to watch this um, you know, so go on to Variety.com. Alternate death scene uh, leaked. Negan's victims were finally revealed. However, a clip leaked right before Sunday's finale that depicted a different victim. The blurry footage shows Maggie Green as the unlucky winner of uh, Negan's brutal eeny, meeny, miny, mo game instead of Abraham. She takes two brutal blows to the head. Glenn cries out to his pregnant wife but gets knocked out. That's what the scene looks like. 
Um, Negan's dialogue is exactly the same. Look at that, taking it like a champ. Uh, the showrunners filmed multiple death scenes, snippets of which were used in the premiere as Rick envisioned the rest of their deaths. So they actually, that whole scene... Um, yes, terrible in a great way. Uh, agreed, Ed, Ed Villarreal. Just to just to keep it just to keep it full uh, full circle for you. Um, the there was that scene, that flashback scene where Rick actually sees every single person get killed. But apparently, the producers filmed this so that you wouldn't know. You know, it's a nice little trick to make sure you don't know who the actual uh, killer is. So that's pretty good. Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, look, that whole episode was hard, and also because I did go through and smack everybody with Lucille at a certain point, everybody took a heat, took a hit. All of it was hard. Uh, I, look, just very emotionally draining. Now, I had a really, really great um, Facebook comment uh, from Michael Momano. Michael Momano is a writer. Um, I actually went to college with him, so that's why I know him. He's on my Facebook feed, but um, he had kind of a similar reaction to uh, The Verge, which was talking about it being torture porn. And he said, I literally could not finish tonight's Walking Dead. I have a fine stomach for violence and gore. I love slasher flicks. The gore wasn't the problem. I have a very high threshold for evil characters. If you don't hate them, at least a little bit, they're not evil enough. Evil is not the problem. Effed up situation, sure. Killing off main characters, fine. But this was just too much. It's too much. I can't anymore. See, this is the thing. I, you know, again, mission accomplished by the producers and mission accomplished by the writers. Uh, but I wonder if that's going to come back to bite them. Now, it didn't bite them in the ratings because uh, the ratings were the highest ever. They beat out NFL football, which is very difficult to do because NFL is like, well, NFL ratings are down uh, by a lot anyway. But beside the point, NFL is usually pretty king. Uh, so it looks like everybody, and, it, and then not only that, it beat season five's ratings, which was the previous uh, Walking Dead winner. So look, whether or not people are coming back next week, that's going to be the telltale sign. I think everybody will. I will. I'll come back. I'll watch. I do want to see what happens. I do want to see Negan eventually get his comeuppance. Um, but I realize by the end of this episode, it's not happening anytime soon. Um, and the one point I'll leave you guys with is I don't read the comic before I watch the show. I'm actually right in line now with the comic where I am with the show. At the end of this episode, this is the first time I'm like, you know what? I just want to go read the comic ahead of time because I just want to know what happens at this point. I don't, even, I don't need the suspense. I don't need any of that. Um, thank you guys for chiming in. We had a great episode. We had uh, Russ Wooten doing a great job breaking things down for us. Um, all of our commenters, Daryl DV, Ed Villarreal, um, our man, Espada Primera Stark, who joins us every week, Jersey Jedi, who's awesome as well, too. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. Uh, next week, we're going to go extreme opposite. Uh, we're going to welcome Alex Segura from uh, Archie Comics in the show to talk about the groundbreaking work they're doing with one of the oldest but still most current Riverdale residents around. Archie's doing some awesome things. We can talk Archie. We'll talk some pleasant stuff next week. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network.